Hello. Um, today, or actually probably for the next few weeks, I have a job where I have to make, um, well, these weldments are partway through the job. Um, these are um, weldments for a, a, a device that works almost like the tailstock of a, of a lathe. There's sort of a quill passes through these two bores, and then on the back will be bolted a, a setup with a thrust bearing. And there's a lead screw nut in the back of the quill and a lead screw. And the purpose of this is, it's like a jacking station. You can move the quill in and out. Um, these are the first three that have been welded together. Um, there's 22 of these in total that have to be made. Um, and so far I've done the pre-weld machining, which essentially was to uh, machine and square up these, we're calling them pillow blocks on all four sides in preparation for welding. Um, there was 44 of them to do, and I have them all done now, but it, um, it I, I had to think about it because there were so many to do. Uh, 44 gives you, what, is, what would it be? 172 sides have to be machined, I think it is. And uh, that's a lot. You know, normally if you're doing this, th uh, this is what they look like when they show up. There's flame cut, flame cut blanks with a quarter inch allowance on all sides. Um, and then I have to machine all four sides. So this is the welding table, if we imagine this was the table of the boring mill, you know, normally if you're just doing a few of these, you'd clamp it down, machine, turn it, put a square on the just machine surface, clamp it down, machine it turn it, etc. all four sides. You also have to remember that each time you do that, you gotta take this off and deburr it because you're gonna have a burr and you don't want that sitting on your table. Um, so it makes for a lot of clamping, unclamping, turning, deburring. Um, it, it would have been a pile of work and I needed to get these done a lot faster than that. Um, so, at the time that we were getting these cut, it hadn't dawned on me, but once I got these and I was trying to figure out how I could do this faster, I realized with the hole in the middle, I could gang these up like books in a bookshelf and clamp them with a threaded rod. And uh, these are the ones that have been done. They're sitting waiting to be welded. Um, this is the our welding jig that we use got a step block just to offset it and then this um, uh, round piece I made on the lathe the ends are faced parallel to each other and we clamp this together and it holds everything square while these are tacked up um, but anyways what I ended up doing with the pillow blocks was ganging them up like this and these ones are done now, I've machined these, um, but you can see the individual parts. And so you set these up against a stop, pull them all tight against it. Uh, you have to make sure the faces are very clean, so I clean those with a flap wheel really well. If they aren't, then your plates start to do this. You know, and then when you machine them, they're, the surfaces aren't going to be square to the plate. So you have to try and get them as close as you can. And sometimes you put it together and check it, and then you have to take it apart and kind of just wiggle things around until it looks decent. Um, you end up, it's not perfect. Some of these will be out 10 thou, 10 thou a lean over their six inch length. Um, but it's not the end of the world because this is pre-weld machine and our jig will align them. And uh, in the end, it'll work out okay. And then when you final machine it, things will be, be in line. Um, the one thing that actually was handy with this setup too was I was able with, with the threaded rod sticking out of the end, I was able to lift these with straps from my crane. So after I machined it, I was able to just lift it off the table put it on the scissor lift table, move it away from the boring mill and deburr it, and then go back, pick it up. And then you can also, it's hanging on the straps, you can just turn this 
it rotates in the strap and you can get the next uh, face pointing in the right direction to be machined. I have some video of that, I'll show it, um, you know, that taking it off and indexing it and deburring it and stuff. And I have some video of the cutting, um, but uh, it, um, it, it worked pretty good. Um, and now we're full on into the welding. Um, today we'll get most of them done. We'll probably have to finish off on Monday and then I can start uh, machining the weldments and what that's going to entail, um, the first thing that has to happen is I'll set this up. It'll sit like that. Again, if we assume this is the boring mill table. And I'll be able to clamp it here. And I'll have some type of blocks here to align it, to get it roughly straight. And then I need to machine this flat. Um, we're, actually, we're actually doing a pretty good job of keeping them straight. Uh, in fact, <laughs> what worked out well is my father-in-law does the welding after he welded the first one, realized that these plates have a bit of a bend in them as received. And we know which direction it was bending from welding so we put them opposite to each other and welded and it turned out that when he was done welding it had pretty much pulled the plate perfectly flat. Um, so we've got a pretty good surface to begin with, but I'm gonna machine that flat. And then if you look here, this little bump that was designed in to the laser cutting, that's my allowance to clean up this surface to make it a datum. So when I'm done the finishing cut, the radius will blend in. It's a small detail, but it was easy to do. Um, so we'll face this. Then we'll set it up like this. And I'll probably just put a couple of slot blocks back here to align that. And then I'll machine this surface. So I'll have a flat bottom and a straight square side. And then what I can do is put slot blocks here and here in the table and slide this over so that that edge is aligned on them. And this is sitting flat. And then I'll go in and I'll face this to make it square because there's the thrust bearing assembly bolts onto the back. It needs to be square. And then after I face it, I'll go through and bore these holes out. And they have to be obviously in line and I have to get them sized for a press fit on a bronze bushing. Um, so I'll get some uh, video of that as well.